What's happening, Puff? I'll be back to you if JD ain't had enough. <laughs> yeah? Flashback to the 90s hip-hop era where the beats were booming and crisscross ruled the scene. But behind the scenes, the drama was unfolding and it's getting crazier than ever. We've got Cat Williams spilling the tea, claiming Diddy and Jermaine Dupri were knee-deep in some shady business, especially with young talents like crisscross. Get ready for a ride through the highs and lows as we expose the shocking truths about crisscross and the dark side of the industry they called home. Yes, y'all supposed to be the most excited. Oh. Let's rewind the clock to the early 90s, a time when the hip hop scene was pulsating with raw energy and a pair of young artists from Atlanta, Georgia, were about to change the game forever. Chris McDaddy, Kelly, and Chris Daddy McSmith, the dynamic duo known as Criss Cross, burst onto the scene with a style and charisma uniquely their own. The journey began in the vibrant city of Atlanta, where the two young artists soaked up the musical vibe surrounding them. Fate took a decisive turn in 1991 when, during a performance at Lynx Mall in Atlanta, they caught the discerning eye of legendary producer Jermaine Dupri. Reflecting on that moment, Dupri remarked, they were stars before I even came around. They were in the mall walking around. It was girls at the cookie company giving them free cookies. They was, they was, I'm telling you. Yeah, I mean, like around the neighborhood we would dance and sing a little bit, but I mean, we really got into it a lot when we met Jermaine Dupree, our producer. Dupree wasted no time in signing Criss Cross to his record label, So So Deaf, setting the stage for their meteoric rise. In 1992, the duo unleashed their debut album, totally crossed out a sonic explosion that resonated with fans worldwide. The album's lead single, Jump, became an anthem, dominating the Billboard Hot 100 chart for an impressive eight weeks. I'm saying we want to keep putting out Criss Cross albums. You know what I'm saying? Maybe like six more. We want to keep putting them out. Their impact extended beyond music. Criss Cross turned the fashion world upside down by sporting their clothes backward, a bold move that became their trademark. The duo's influence was undeniable, and soon, the entire nation was flipping their fashion sense in homage. Their music videos, particularly the high-energy visual for Jump, became MTV staples, solidifying their status as cultural icons. We, we want, like, we got, like, big plans, you know what I'm saying? We, we looking like, we trying to get, like, a record label and stuff, you know what I'm saying? We're like 40 years old. The pinnacle of their success arrived in 1992 when Criss Cross joined the King of Pop, Michael Jackson, on his European tour, sharing the stage with a legend marked dream come true for the young artists cementing their place in music history. As the 90s progressed, Criss Cross navigated the evolving landscape of hip-hop with finesse. In 1993, they released their second album, Day Bomb, which not only showcased their artistic growth, but also secured a platinum certification. Hits like All Right and I'm Real kept the momentum alive Proving that Criss Cross wasn't a one-hit wonder, but a force to be reckoned with. So both of your names are Chris, right? Yeah. So do, have y'all been like friends? Yeah, we've yeah. been friends ever since the first grade. School, first, you know, school. Yes, yeah, so we've been school friends. Buddies. However, success came with its challenges. The novelty of their backward pants and high-pitched sound wore off, and the duo faced pressure to adapt to the changing tides of the music industry. Despite internal drama and external pressures, Criss Cross persevered, releasing their third and final studio album, Young, Rich, and Dangerous, in 1996. The album, with tracks like Tonight's the Night and Live and Die for Hip Hop, showcased a more mature side of the duo. As the 90s drew to a close, Criss Cross decided to part ways, joining the ranks of other groups from that era. A rap beef with another bad creation, AbQ, added a dramatic chapter to their narrative, captivating fans and the media alike. In 2013, Criss Cross briefly reunited for the 20th anniversary of So So Deaf, offering fans a nostalgic trip down memory lane. However, it proved to be a one-time event, signaling the end of an era. Tragedy struck on May 1, 2013, when Chris McDaddy Kelly was found unresponsive at home and later pronounced dead in an Atlanta hospital. The untimely death marked the end of a chapter, leaving fans and the music industry mourning the loss of a talented artist the death of Chris Kelly. He's best known as half of the 90s group Criss Cross. Kelly died after losing consciousness at his Southwest Atlanta home. In the wake of Chris Kelly's untimely death, the veil shrouding his personal struggles began to lift, revealing a tragic narrative of addiction and its devastating consequences. As rumors swirled about his erratic behavior and disturbing video footage surfaced, the world learned that the beloved rapper had been waging a long and painful battle with substance abuse. The whispers that had circulated in 2009, sparked by images showing Kelly with bald patches on his head, were overshadowed by the harsh reality of his addiction. While Kelly clarified at the time that he suffered from alopecia, a condition causing hair loss, the true extent of his struggles remained concealed. Authorities disclosed that Kelly's mother, Donna Kelly Pratt, and his uncle Lamar Williams had candidly shared details of his history of substance abuse. The rapper had been grappling with addiction for years, facing numerous challenges in silence, though the exact nature of his struggles remained largely undisclosed. 
those close to him were acutely aware of the toll it had taken on his life. Right now, the family is just trying to get beyond what has happened, and we, you know, we've lost him, and that's, um, that's basically where we're at right now. Chris Kelly's battle with addiction cast a dark shadow over his career, impacting both his personal and professional life. The toll on his physical and mental well-being led to a decline in creative output and an inability to meet the expectations of fans and the industry. Despite his undeniable talent and early success with Criss Cross, Kelly found himself ensnared in the clutches of addiction, a force he couldn't break free from. The once promising rap star's life took a tragic turn, echoing the all-too-familiar narrative of artists succumbing to the perils of substance abuse. According to reports obtained by TMZ, Chris Kelly's mother revealed that on the night before his passing, he had mixed substances, a lethal combination that proved fatal. The toxicology report later confirmed the cause of death as an overdose, with a mixture of substances in his system contributing to the tragedy. The distressing call made from Kelly's home to 911, reporting that the rapper had passed out and was unresponsive, marked the beginning of the end. Medical professionals arrived promptly, but their efforts to revive him were in vain. Chris Kelly was pronounced dead at approximately 5, 0 p.m. on May 1, 2013, leaving a void in the music industry and a profound sense of loss for fans worldwide. In the wake of this tragedy, key figures in Kelly's life, such as Jermaine Dupri and his longtime collaborator Chris Smith, publicly mourned the loss of the talented artist. Dupri, who played a pivotal role in Chris Cross's success, penned an open letter to fans expressing his grief, referring to Chris Kelly as a son he never had. Chris Smith shared heartfelt sentiments, reminiscing about their friendship and the void left by Kelly's absence. This morning when I woke up, this peace came over me. I know, I know Chris is in heaven. The revelation of Chris Kelly's struggles with substance abuse not only served as a stark reminder of the challenges many artists face in the music industry, but also laid bare the darker side of an industry that Cat Williams had hinted at, a world where success and fame can come at an immense personal cost. You're going to miss him. He was a young man and had a lot of, a lot of, lot of left. He, he did, you know, we were just, we were blessed to have him for the period of time that he was here. As we untangle the threads of Chris Kelly's life, the echoes of Cat Williams' warnings reverberate louder than ever. In the underbelly of the hip-hop industry, where fame and fortune intertwine with darker secrets, Williams dared to hint at the unspeakable. He asserted that Jermaine Dupri, the maestro behind Chris Cross's rise to stardom, might be entangled in sinister dealings. Williams threw the term K of predators into the mix, sending shockwaves through the industry. Connecting the dots, it's imperative to examine the allegations against Dupree. Though lacking in concrete evidence, Cat Williams' bold claims resurfaced when Bo Wow, another artist mentored by Dupree, cryptically hinted at undisclosed secrets. The intrigue deepened as netizens revisited a 2011 video where Williams didn't mince words, accusing Dupree of being part of a disturbing narrative. The video, once dismissed as the ramblings of a troubled comedian, gained a haunting resonance in light of recent events. Jermaine Dupree, king of the house, if you ask me, baby. The drama didn't stop there. Speculation arose regarding Diddy's role in the alleged cover-up of Dupree's misdeeds. The friendship between Diddy and Dupree became a focal point, with rumors circulating that Diddy might have shielded his friend from the consequences of inappropriate relationships with minors. As we delve into this murky narrative, it's essential to remember that these are unverified claims, shrouded in a cloud of mystery. However, the eerie coincidence between Williams' warnings and subsequent revelations suggests that beneath the glamour of the 90s hip-hop scene, a darker undercurrent may have played a role in shaping the tragic destiny of artists like Chris Kelly. The industry's facade of glitz and glamour appears increasingly fragile, with each revelation peeling back another layer to expose a truth many were reluctant to acknowledge. As the haunting echoes of Chris Kelly's struggles with addiction continue to reverberate, a new layer of darkness emerges from the shadows of the 90s hip-hop era. In a recent interview, rapper Daz Dillinger has dropped an explosive bombshell, alleging that Jada Pinkett Smith had an entanglement with a young Chris Kelly from Criss Cross during 1993 when Kelly was underage. You think Jada Pinkett was entangling? She was entangling with Chris Kelly from Criss Cross. Cause Daz vividly recounts a peculiar encounter, claiming Criss Cross was in the room and Chris was like, Jada Pinkett is at the door, but don't leave. Take the substances, chill. These startling claims add a sinister twist to the narrative, implicating Jada Pinkett Smith in the exploitation of an underage artist. The timing of Daz's revelation aligns with growing speculation about the unconventional dynamics within the Smith family, fueled by recent statements from both Jada and Will Smith. The revelation raises questions about the dynamics within the 90s hip-hop scene and the exploitation of young talents by figures who wielded influence. The alleged entanglement 
between Jada and Chris Kelly adds a dark chapter to the tragic tale of Criss Cross, hinting at a web of secrets woven into the fabric of the industry. In the wake of these revelations, the tragic loss of talent exemplified by Chris Kelly's untimely death becomes all the more poignant. The industry, with its whispers and secrets, appears to have played a role in the downward spiral of artists graced the stage with youthful exuberance. As we reflect on the complexities of fame and the toll it can take on young talents, Cat Williams' warnings echo louder than ever. Now, dear viewers, as we navigate this labyrinth of revelations, the shocking claims about Jada Pinkett Smith and Chris Kelly add an unsettling layer to the already dramatic tale of Chris Cross. Drop your comments below and share your perspective on the dark undercurrents of the music industry. And here's a provocative question for you. In an era where fame and exploitation collided, do you think these revelations will change how we view our favorite 90s icons? Let the conversation flow and stay tuned for more jaw-dropping insights.